Number 82. Identify the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure of each of the following molecules or ions. And then we have A through E. So we did a very similar question like this in number 81. So if you want a more in-depth version, go back to that one if you haven't done so already. This one will kind of be a quick inversion because there's a lot to get to. The first thing I want to say, like in everything else that we said in chapter four, if you want to find out an electron pair geometry or a molecular structure, you got to first know how to draw those Lewis structures. So if we don't know how to draw Lewis structures, that's okay. Just go back to question number 40 of this chapter. And that's when I start doing the problems to show you how to draw Lewis structures. So if you just feel a little bit uncomfortable, you can go back and, and do those and then come back to this question. All right. So what I want to do is I want to just split this up. So we have electron pair geometry and we have molecular structure. I'm just going to put a line down here just so that I can uh, write down what each one of them is for A through E. And now let's just go over what uh, the difference is between them. So if we're talking about an electron pair geometry, I'll just say EPG, electron pair geometry just tells you how many total things, and I'll put things in quotes, total things around central atom, CA. All right? So a thing can be two things, right? It could either be a bond, so we're looking for bonds around the central atom, or we're looking for lone pairs. And a lone pair, remember, is the two dots, right? One pair is two, two things. When we figure out that, then we can find out our molecular structure, MS. And the molecular structure, basically, if we're going by this chart, all you need to do is know how many total lone pairs in the central atom there are. All right. And this is classified as either having zero lone pairs, one lone pair, two lone pair, three or four lone pairs. And that will be classified as your molecular structure, right? Your MS. And then just your total things, your electron pair geometry will only be found in this box. And your molecular structure could be this box, but it could also extend out to the other ones as well. So that's the difference. Now, over here, they say number of electron pairs. The electron pairs is what I call things. Okay. So first, let's draw A, right? IF6. And it's a plus sign. So... You could pause the video if you want to try to write your own Lewis structure, but in this case, you should have iodine in the middle, surrounded by six fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each fluorine should have three lone pairs around it to get the octet rule. Iodine is going to have more than uh, eight electrons because it's below period two on the periodic table, and that's totally fine. And iodine has no lone pairs in this situation, but it has a charge, so you have to bracket it and put the positive charge. So now let's find out our electron pair geometry. Well, iodine is in the middle, right? That's our central atom. And for electron pair geometry, we're looking at total things. And remember, it's either a lone pair or it's a bond. So around the central atom, you have one bond here, two, three, four, five, six. There's no dots. So this is a total of six things, right? Six electron pairs. So I go down to number six here, and the electron pair geometry would be octahedral. So that's, I'm just going to put that up here, octahedral. Okay. So now let's see. It's a total of six things. That's going to tell me the electron pair geometry. And then the molecular structure tells me lone pairs. But in this one, right, iodine didn't have any lone pairs around it. There are lone pairs around fluorines, but fluorine is not the central atom. So we don't care about that. So in this case, it's zero lone pairs. So in this case, the electron pair geometry and the molecular structure are going to be octahedral because it has zero lone pairs. So in this case, it's exactly the same, octahedral. 
and A is done. B. CF4. So you could pause if you want to try to write your own and then check my answer, but it's carbon that's bound to 4 fluorine. And each fluorine, just like before, has three lone pairs around it. Carbon, in this case, can only have up to eight electrons because it is in group, uh, it's in period two. So it can't have the expanded octet, but it still has the octet rule. So now let's look. Electron pair geometry, go to the central atom and count how many total things. In this case, there's four bonds. One, two, three, four. There's no lone pairs, so there's a total of four things. So... I go to my number of electron pairs, I go down to four, and my electron pair geometry would be tetrahedral. Now we just zone in on if there were any lone pairs or not, but in this one, there's no lone pairs around the carbon, right? So four things total, but zero lone pairs. And in this case, it would still be the same exact thing. So electron pair geometry is tetrahedral. Molecular structure is also tetrahedral. And that gets rid of B. Okay, so I'm going to erase these, but you can pause the video if you'd like. I'm just going to quickly erase these. Okay, perfect. Now C. We have BF3. So you could pause the video again if you want to check your Lewis structure, but it should be born in the middle, surrounded by three fluorines. And each fluorine has three lone pairs. And in this case, boron does not have any lone pairs. Okay. So total things around boron, well, looks like there's three things. There's one bond, two three bonds. There's no dots, right? So there's a total of three things, three electron pairs. So three is trigonal planar, and that's your electron pair geometry, trigonal planar. And now you zone in to see if you have any lone pairs. But just like we said before, there's no lone pairs. So this would be zero lone pairs. So, in this case, the electron geometry, electron pair geometry, is the same as your molecular structure because zero lone pairs is still trigonal planar for three things. So, they're exactly the same. Maybe I'm starting to see a trend how this question is going, <laughs> but we will see. All right, C. Oh, sorry, D. SIF5 negative. So let's first draw the Lewis structure. Silicon in the middle, surrounded by five fluorine. So one, two, three, four, five. And in this case, just like all the other ones, the fluorines have three lone pairs. Do, do, do. Trying to fit it in. And just like before, silicon will not have any lone pairs in the middle. So let's see, electron pair geometry. We look at silicon, right? Total number of things, it looks like there's five bonds. One, two, three, four, five. So five total things. So that brings us down to five electron pairs. Five is trigonal bipyramid. I like to say bipyramidal, but it, I, it's the same thing. I was just... When I was taught this, it was always bipyramidal. So I'll put that there. It doesn't really matter. Trigonal, bipyramidal. And now you zone in on if you have any lone pairs, but just like the other ones. And for this one, silicon did not have any lone pairs, right? You didn't see any dots. So zero lone pairs. And zero lone pairs for molecular structure is the same thing. So they're both trigonal bipyramidal. And that gets rid of D. Last but not least, we just got to do the other one. I'm going to erase C, and then we will just do E over here. So for E, B, E, C, L, 2. Pause it if you want to write your own Lewis structure, but it should be beryllium in the middle, surrounded by two chlorines. 
Each chlorine has three lone pairs, and the beryllium has no lone pairs. And now let's see. Beryllium is the central atom. Oops. Beryllium is the central atom. How many total things does it have? Electron pairs? One bond here? One bond here? So that's a total of two bonds. So two things. And two things is linear. So that's the electron pair geometry, linear. And same as before, there was no dots or lone pairs around beryllium, so zero lone pairs. So that means that the molecular structure is the same thing. Zero lone pairs for two is still linear. So it would be the same exact thing. And that's it. So in this case, we're just keep noticing how the electron pair geometry is equal to the molecular structure. Hopefully in the next questions, if you want more practice, uh, they will be different. They have to be, right? I mean, they got to give you questions like that, but we will see. So thank you so much for tuning in. Click subscribe if you like. It will help us out a lot. We hope that we are helping you guys out. So, you know, pay forward, I guess, right? <laughs> but thank you so much. Um, I will see you guys all in the next question. Happy studying.